Evariste Kumasi from senior advisor in UNICEF New York, worked as a WASH specialist in Burkina Faso, was advisor to the president of Madagascar, traveled the whole world and knows a lot, very much inside information on real WASH problems, not only the theory, but also the practice. Evariste, I give you the mic and surprise us. Thank you. <laughs> I think he's, yeah, thank you very much, Jerome. Uh, Jerome is a very old friend uh, in Burkina we met, and also, uh, unfortunately, he, ca he could not make Madagascar, uh, but in Madagascar it was very beautiful. Many people didn't come to see me, but it's okay. They thought that he, I'm very isolated, but it's okay. It's a very nice country, Madagascar. And now I moved to New York since last year, and another big city, quite different from Madagascar. You live in the bush, now you are living in the city. So this is the thing. So um, what I'm going to tell is more a quite different story on uh, how we, uh, the wash sector can, can move forward and how we can help uh, modernize the whole monitoring system. One of the challenges we are facing in the water and sanitation and hygiene sector and ha is how we can better monitor our system, how we can ensure that uh, we contribute a lot to, to reduce the impact of disease on the children, and also uh, how we can ensure that the nutrition status of the children uh, is reduced. So uh, the presentation that I will make basically is how we, as a UNICEF, we see the whole, as a water and sanitation session within UNICEF, we see the whole uh, innovation, monitoring, and how we can better help uh, the country move forward. Uh, just a story, uh, UNICEF is an organization we are working in 110 countries over the world. Uh, you have some specific program in 16 countries, 60 countries where we have a full package of water and sanitation program. And we have uh, a very reduced package in some of the country, like India, where we don't have uh, much implementation, but we move the whole sector forward. Uh, like in Indonesia, those are the two countries where you have a big open defecator in the world as well. So where we are putting a lot of effort in to reduce all those. Um, when we are talking about modernizing, we are not talking about a huge thing. We are talking about how we can use the existing system to help the sector move forward. Uh, since a long time, you, you, as a UNICEF, we are struggling a lot to see how, syst how we can develop a system that suits only uh, our mo monitoring system inside and also help the country uh, modernize their, their monitoring system. So uh, what we thought basically can help is this global idea that we got in, in, in New York uh, for many time ago, like how we go from the water point uh, in place in the beginning and how you use the mobile devices and have a database and how we can translate in terms of treatment to you know, feed our donor, to feed uh, the, the, the community where the system are in place also to feed also uh, uh, the, the decision makers. One of the one of the challenges we are facing by using this very simple model is that as we are uh, an organization well decentralized, each of the country is using its way, this kind of idea. And you are ending up having a lot of theory or a lot of a small pilot like this. There are a lot going on in the field. In many countries, you, you start with rapid SMS like in in Ethiopia to monitor if the jerry can or if the, uh, the, the, what do you call, the water treatment system came quickly in the place or if the water, uh, if the food is in the place or you go to the text for change like HIV system they are using in Uganda or you go to Nokia, Nokia data gathering system when they want to support the education system somewhere and you go to Tostan which is a sort of a self-pay or MPSA payment system they want to install basically in Senegal or you go to connected classroom where some of the country want to connect people in Asia, America, 
with Madagascar or Uganda. So those are kind of a lot of things going on. In some other country, you call it a process because you are so well decentralized and each of the country are thinking different way. But what we, as a lesson, what we learn from the whole thing is that we need uh, the technology make things very faster. Like, f for example, when you are when we are getting into agreement in Ethiopia, what we ask our provider to do is say, okay, what the report that you are getting on the paper, you want to have it very fast. This is what we tell to our provider in, in Ethiopia, for example. And they develop this thing they call rapid SMS, or some people call it 140 characters. And they came with a very innovative way. At the time that we leave the field, we got the report in the system. And we have a very good linkage with service provider there in Ethiopia who do it. And the one, Ushahidi, Ushahidi was a very nice system in place in Kenya after the election in 2008. It's a sort of a social crowding system. When the violence has started, this NGO built the system and connecting people. And per day we can have one, 130 violence reported through the SMS system, which is great for us. But all those kind of things, we don't have something to put in. What we learn, the lesson we learn is we have, uh, things are getting to us very fast through those dividers. And sometimes we, in the community where you have water point, this encourage a lot of literacy. Some people get no what we can write, how we can write four, three, five, based on that. It's very, very intelligent. And also it's a sort of a new foundation to build the monitoring system forward because people get to know how to use mobile, how to access all those kind of de de devices. <laughs> Business happen very faster. The case was in Niger, by using the same SMS in Niger during the nutrition crisis, people can know that you know, in X village, the cost of the grain is 10, 100 francs CFA, and here is 200. So there's a benchmark and people can know where they can go and buy the cheapest one by using the same rapid MS very fast. So the business can be improved. And one good thing is that if you use the app level of mobile devices, you can get the information at the same time at the same pages. So which is good, the lesson that you learn. And the best thing for us, like uh, we have a very little resource for the monitoring. Over the past year, the organization is not giving a lot of resource for that. But we, uh, through those kind of mechanisms, we realize that the coordination is very cheap. You don't need to put a high system in place before ensure that all those things are working very well in most of the country. And the best of the best is how you use young people. The young people are very, very active and can you know, put and provide the data very, in a very quick manner. But not only young people, we have the elders also. My mom today can touch the smartphone, what she cannot do before, you know, and can send the information. All those people are involved. And the, what we can say at the end of the day that whether we like or not, the change is there here. We cannot avoid using those kind of technology to move the sector forward. But na the next presentation, the next slide will show the challenge we are facing basically uh, in the sector. How all those diversified technology uh, that are being successful in many countries, we can help to bring to the scale. In each country we saw it's well done, it's developed, the government accept it, and how we can build it and go to the scale. This is one of the challenges we are facing. The, the, the second one is how we can learn from our mistake and do better. And the third one is how we can have a cross-regional to learn from India, learn from South Africa, learn for, for West Africa, and to share more knowledge between the region. And the, the fourth one is how we can also use it in emergency. Because it's UNICEF's more emergency focused organization. We have been known for many years like this, although we work a lot in the development program. How we can, how this tool can also bring a change in interagency collaboration 
or open technology to travel also change at a global scale. So those are the challenges we are facing. And I would like to introduce, and the next slide in the slide, my daughter gave me uh, two days ago. It's my daughter, five years old. Uh, I was talking about her today. She's the one who gave me this picture. And I, I would like to introduce two fundamental notions, the BBT and BAT. She's the one who gave me that. I say, okay, dad, if you are going to Amsterdam, you should tell them there's a BBT and BAT. I say, what is a BBT? I say, born before technology. Mm -hmm. Aha, amazing. And the second one is born after technology. So you have the two notions, BBT and BAT. What is the difference between the two here in terms of capacity? So people who are born after technology are very, you know, very quick to solve the problem. And people who are born before, it's quite difficult to them. It's a matter of, a matter of thinking or oh, before, you know, be when I was born, we didn't have a, a, a computer. What we use this time is MS-DOS. <laughs> no? And now it's, everything is there. We have uh, Windows uh, 8, all those kind of things, and suffering on this. So in the same time, if you see this man, we have in most of the countries, most of the ministries, in many of the ministries, you have those people who have the computer there. They have a computer, they have mobile phone, but they don't know how to use them. Many of them, you go to the municipality, you go down, you have a computer, you have everything. They, even, they don't even have a generator to have energy inside it. It's not only the capacity of the people, but it's also the institutional capacity to feed the system. Institutional capacity is that no money to pay the electricity, no yeah. money to pay the software to maintain the system, no money to even though ensure that the data collector is printed, made available to the minister himself. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story in 2008 when I was in Madagascar. The GNP data was released in April 2008. I was there in June 2008. And fortunately, I met with the president who asked me to make his speech for the European Union Summit on Water and Sanitation. The data at the ministry is only one guy who has the data, but the data, all the data collected are not in the ministry. The data are in the home of this guy. The whole system, monitoring system in, in, in the ministry is not working. So it's why basically we need to have this, not only the ca individual capacity, but this one supported at the country level, even though we are still having this gap between the BBT and BAT. And now is why basically we are thinking based on the challenge we had having all those diversification of technology existing or process existing inside UNICEF. And also having this challenge at the ministry level, we think that one way we can overcome is to have a credible institution that can support the water sector to build the whole monitoring system. It's why we are talking, thinking about how we can mo modernize the whole thing. So where do we start, basically? A couple of ideas. Sierra Leone was a very good case, where together with the, the ministry there and also with Smith International, we, uh, with the software of developed by ACVO Flow, we supported the mapping of 20,000 water points in Sierra Leone. This collaboration will continue. I think we found that ACVO, the work they are doing is great. It can help us and very cheap for us in terms of maintenance. So it's what basically engaging with them is very easy to avoid all those kind of technology or idea you are getting in before. Because they will maintain the, thing, the system, the, the, the data for us. You don't need to put additional money in, in the system. We have another case, which is Liberia. I think Liberia is the same. Uh, what I can tell also that in each of the country, our program are quite linked with the ministry in charge of water and sanitation. We cannot do anything without going to the ministry, get the agreement involving them in the process of the country. So if they buy in, we can support them 
financially also technically so that they can build their monetary system. Uh, the, Liber the Liberia case is a very good one because Liberia, you don't go alone, we go with the World Bank, uh, the WSP. And the thing is that by going with the, those big organizations, it's very easy to roll out in most of the country. The good case is that from Liberia, we are going to move further to develop a new, a new tool, how we can support uh, the, 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 the some, some of the survey in the country. But, so Liberia is a very good case as well. And now what we are thinking in, in the coming country is how we can go to scale. And those are the countries we are planning to do the work with ACVO in the coming, in the coming months, because some of our agreement are already in the process. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire will be one of the countries where we'll be doing the, 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 the program because there's a good a discussion going on already. Benin is one of them. Do is the similar thing we did in Liberia, and I will come again later with the challenge that we will need to be addressed uh, in the coming. Ghana will be one of the key. Guinea, Guinea Conakry, Mali. I think Jerome was talking about Mali already. There's be something going on that can be top up with with the existing the, the new program. Mauritania will be one. Burkina Faso and Niger. Those are the countries we thought that we can go very fast. But what is the potential? Uh, the big potential is here, where we have all those countries. It's Africa fragmented, but it's OK. <laughs> For us, we have categorized Africa in three main areas. There's the southern and east Africa. There's the middle east and north Africa region. And also there's west Africa. So each of the region has their pole. We are, me, I'm based in, in New York as moni monitoring guy, <laughs> but we have a poll in all, all those, kind of, uh, those country. Now, the first poll where you are working hard with AFCO is West Africa. There's a potential to move here and also to move here with the same tool, but you know, with sort of improvement because some of the challenge we need to overcome. So what are the need for the coming years? to support also the ministry, and also so that we can have a benefit, a benefit from that. In 2006, 2008, um, the new direct executive director has launched a new idea is how we monitor uh, our results in the field through equity mapping. We need to reach the people who didn't have access to anything. How can we map them? Those are the challenge we'll be facing. So our, all our programs have shift this way to tackle the people or the people who are in need in a very remote area or in a very difficult area to reach. So it's one of, we need to, and now we have developed a monitoring tool inside the organization called uh, Monitoring for Resort for Equity Framework, which is very, very, it's, it has 10 determinants, 24 key indicators, it's very huge. And how we link with what you do in the monitoring the feed is very key. So why I'm here is basically to say, okay, we are seeing something similar that help us own to benefits to us. If not, I will not be here because we see a potential that this can be very beneficial for us. So what we aim also, from that, one of the things is to use in at the community level, if it can come with a dashboard. Reporting a dashboard at community level can be very beneficial so that the community can see what is going on. Is this water pump working or not? What are the key issues to address that? The second one is how we can improve the software. Putting in one of the issues that we didn't put before is the water quality monitoring. It's a challenging. We are working in some of the university in America, Buffalo University. How we think more to have something in the field that we can have real-time water quality monitoring. It's a big challenge because the microbiological aspect will be challenging, but how we can put it in the system? Because the monitor is not only if the pump is functioning, if the water is flowing, but how we are providing a safe, a safe, safe, water to the population is one of the challenges, how we can address that. I think we cannot do it today because you are in the flow one, two, but we'll be moving 
to fold three, fold four, we'll be getting this answer. It's a stepwise approach, and I'm still convinced for that. The maintenance of use of the system at the ministry level, how embedding the whole system at the ministry level, they can still maintain if a very short technical assistance from AFGO. I, I think it's a key if you don't build on that. And the last one is how the RSA, SRA to, can increase the transparency and accountability. So these are the things that you'll be looking for also to help stabilize a little bit the tool and can help also feed in our monitoring system. The last one is to look in forward. And um, I think we still have to support the government to have this capacity gap fill. This is the first thing. So if you want to have a modernized system, monitoring system for the government level to have institutional capacity development, also sustain modernized system, how we can help them better use the tool equipment available to them and so how UNICEF can play a major role to advocate so that most of the organization agree to use the same tool. It's a challenge. In some of the country we face UNDP tool, UNICEF tool, World Bank tool for monitoring, you know, how we can, this is our role, it's not ACPO, but how we can, you know, advocate to have uh, something more standard and you know, well proved like AVO has done in some of the country. And the last one, yeah, you the same institution for memory because if you don't, you are keeping changing, the memory will last. How we can keep it, you know, running. So those are the way forward we are looking and this is the collaboration we are planning to have with ACVO. And I can tell you that myself, I, I, I ran into ACVO, all them, Pedia, everything with ACVO, I think was very fantastic too. The, main on the one on transparency, I look at it, we are not there for the moment, but it's okay. UNICEF is not there for the moment. We are planning also how we can engage better in this transparency uh, process, but it's, uh, it's, it's something we need to build on. So those are the key issues I just want to highlight. And uh, this picture is from Madagascar. It's telling a lot of stories, so you can imagine what is happening. This is uh, Windows, and uh, people are laughing at the Windows. It's uh, amazing. And I took this picture in 2008, and uh, when I went to this school, and it's, people are happy, although the system are not good, but it tells a lot of story. The Malagashi can tell you what is happening behind this picture. Thank you very much. <laughs>it's a four or five day session with the community only for the water session and we came the community came at the come at the end of the day say okay those are the key problems you are having for the sustainability for example how we can fix it and now they score them they score which is the highest problem which is lowest and how to as address them it's more complicated but now what we can uh, ask ACVO is to consider some key parameter at the community level. Is, for example, if you take the hand pump, one is the functionality. Is it functioning? Two, is this the service is there? Is the lead, uh, how many liters we want? Is it there? 
there? Is it the, what do you call the community water point, all those kind of things there? So those are the key parameters we'll be looking to have the dashboard at the community level. The sec for the toilet, for example, uh, now we are, everyone is talking about open defecation free. How do we ensure that the community is open defecation free? Do they have a latrine? Do they maintain them? So we can have a very, not a big one, very simple in the beginning, and it can be very complicated at the end of the day. So it's not, so that we can have this feedback to the community. If you don't have the feedback, next time someone go there, you do something different again. And have a dashboard in the community, it will help, you know, people know that some people, they, they, they pass through here and, and they, they did something. So we can still discuss in that and how we can figure out in a, a very appropriate manner. I think we are still open to have more dialogue and how we can reflect the tool. So I was just wondering, from your experience, how much uh, demand is there from the community uh, and from the local government for WASH? So one of the problems is if there isn't much, if, if there isn't a felt need for better quality water, for toilets, then uh, one of the big struggles is unless there is a demand from that side, anything that we try to you know, suggest or try to put in place, is uh, the, it, it's very difficult because it won't stick. If they, if they have higher priorities for livelihoods, for jobs, for something else, food security, uh, then uh, you're trying to push a solution which they haven't really felt. How does that fit in with, uh, with everything else that we're trying to do here? Okay, um, I, I think it's a very important question. Um, in the community, most of the community, even at the local level, when you do uh, the problem analysis, most of the country or community, you don't find wash at a very high level because it's not a priority for some of the people. Why? Because they don't have the basic knowledge how the em a wash can impact their life. So this is a fancy. It's why we like also uh, Aquapedia, you know, if it can help also in some good language, translate that could be good. They don't have this knowledge to say that, okay, if I have a proper sanitation system, I have a good water quality, it can impact my, my children. You know, you know this thing they call 1,000 days of the, for the kid is two years because it's where if the children get contaminated by the feces, it can go inside and you know, stick in a small gutter here and can have tropical enteropathy. It's very complicated. And the children cannot grow higher. So if those knowledge is available at local level, people will change their mind. And some of the study that we are doing uh, with WSP showing a lot of impacts, how it's related to the economical level, all those kind of things. I'm telling you one of the stories uh, in, in Burkina uh, is very funny. When they put in place the community-led total sanitation program. And some of the people, they don't want it because, you know the whole story, because Burkina is a lot of sun. You just defecate openly and the sun just, you know, dried. So people are happy. So why are you going to them to, to defecate in the toilet? So at the end of the day, they realize the value by putting there because the diarrhea disease has reduced significantly in the community, and the money they used before to go to the hospital, you know, they don't use this money again. So if, you know, I can come to you, if I don't see the benefits doing anything, I will not do it. So someone has to show you what is the benefit of doing so. So this is a first step, because normally it's not a big demand as such but you need to educate people on that so that you can have you know, their commitment to move forward. This is the first step. And this is what we are doing in most of our promotion to have this first step. Because uh, if you consider sanitation, hand washing with soap can reduce a lot of a lot the diarrhea by 40%, which is huge. If you know that you have 80,000 people dying every day because of the diarrhea is amazing. So how we can help move 
this step forward is very important. So having this information, having this knowledge can help change the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, statute. The second one is how, how do we help them monitor better the whole thing they are doing. Uh, in, the, in, in 18 or 1980, we, we focus more on community program to deliver water system. And nowadays, the whole system has changed. We are thinking now how we move to, you know, outsourcing, have a sort of m uh, mixed management of the system. So if you have a good monitoring system in place, that can help the people who are contracting ADA can change the way uh, the transparency and accountability to deliver the service for the population. So these are very important, the dashboard, uh, the monitoring system, so that people can monitor first the service level, because they are the, the, what you call, the mayor in the city is responsible to provide a good service for their population. If someone is not monitoring anything, nothing will happen. Let me, one of example is the risk analysis of the water point. If you are 200 people having one borehole, you don't care, I can do uh, the analysis one time, six months. But if you are 3,000 people, the risk level is very important. If someone is not monitoring the risk level, and you are killing 2,000 people if there's something happening there. So those are the things that you need to make sure that those monitoring components are in place, is well disseminated every time so that people can aware and know their right and how to claim the, 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 their right as well. How to claim uh, what they need from the, for, for, from the, uh, from the height holder as well. So those are the things that monitoring system will help build on. Thanks. Question? Yes. Because you were talking about uh, uh, national systems, right, and and, uh, and and various tools being out there, and uh, and that's right. That's that's a big uh, ball game in which you need uh, the support of large players like uh, like yours. Uh, but I wanted to say a bit about what ACFO's approach is maybe in that is that. Um, in theory, if, if systems are used and are open to share the data, um, it doesn't matter, right, whether there's different tools. And I think that's also the approach that we're trying to, uh, to work on. For example, text to change was mentioned, yeah. uh, and they're in-house, so that's an easy start for us. And that's, that's trying to figure out if you use the tools and you standardize certain minimum questions, and you share them openly, you can bring that together. And what I'm seeing now, at least, is that there's a lot of willingness of all the tool providers, you know, it's, it's quite a lot of startups, you could say, or some more mature than others, to get together, because that needs to be standardized in a way. And that is not a content question only, but also a software side. And I think there's also a lot of movement there, and I think that's also a part of the puzzle that needs to come together that uh, can help make this uh, all yeah. work. Oh yeah, it's one of our challenge also, one of our advocacy point, how we can bring all those people together, all those software developers together. And we are also working with Dev and Fo, based in India, basically we, because they are the one doing our software for many centuries now, and how we can you know, have a very good relation, put all those together to have something, you know, uh, more. We are, we'll be having a meeting with them in, uh, in two weeks, in New York, they will be coming for a, a discussion with us how we can, you know, have a, a, a good thinking and how link the two at go, uh, what we are doing and what the reporting mechanism we are having and before we enter in, uh, you know, a very bigger agreement with all of us. So, yeah, I think. Yes. I, I want There's one thing that I believe from, from my experience that I have is very important and that should not be forgotten or overruled by all the tools that we create and all the, the, the instruments that we make. And it is that the contact between people who have and people who have not is an, an exchange of experience that is the most important one. If, like you said in the beginning, I think uh, practice is the most important theory. Um, People, if you bring people who do not have water and who don't think it is important to a group of people who have water, 
and to have seen the benefits that they save time, a lot of time that they can use practically and economically. That is the most, Im I think it's a very important one that should not be uh, done away with, with all our instruments. Thank you. Thank you very much for the remark. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ibrisa. <laughs>